In John's Gospel, chapter 1, verses 1 to 5, we read, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. In these words, John is referring to Jesus as the Word of God. He came to fulfil the words that God had spoken to Moses in the Old Testament when he gave the law and through the Old Testament prophets. We can also read in Isaiah chapter 55, verses 10 and 11, As the rain and the snow come down from heaven and do not return to it without watering the earth and making it bud and flourish, so that it yields seeds for the sower and bread for the eater, so is my word that goes out from my mouth. It will not return to me empty, but will ac accomplish what I desire and achieve the purpose for which it was sent. Jesus, as the word of God, was sent for a purpose. He was sent to reconcile us to God by his death and resurrection. At 60MM recently, we've recently been discussing the Trinity and realised what a difficult concept it is to explain. But this is the uniqueness of the Christian faith. We have this triune God. We have God the Father in heaven who sent his son Jesus to the earth to show us, to illustrate to us his true nature and that his coming made, the made it possible for the Holy Spirit to be left with us to guide us and help us to live the life that God has intended us to live. As we come into the Christmas season and celebrate the coming of Jesus into this world, it's good to be thankful that he did come, that he was willing to submit to the will of God, to go through all that he went through, so that we can know who God is and give us the capability to live the life to be to be his reflection on this world for us to show the world the true nature of God and the reason why we're here the reason we have this life here we have the opportunity to accept God into our lives and to make a preparation for spending eternity with him I was reminded recently of a Chris Bowater song that states in two, a couple of lines this is the mystery. Christ has chosen you and me to be the revelation of his glory. This is the life we should be living. This is the life we need to live to show the world what Jesus did and how important it is. One more thought I had about the Trinity was that <clears throat> in John's Gospel, in the beginning, it says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The Word is God. And so... When Jesus came to earth as a human being, he said that he only said the words that the Father gave him. So he was separate from God, but he is still the same makeup as God, although in human form. It's a difficult concept to get your head round, but it's like it's the same it's the same thing but in different forms. Just as we get water, ice and steam, they're all water, but in different circumstances, they're different makeup. And Jesus here on earth was in human form, but he was in total connection with the Father and only did and spoke what the Father told him. And so he was a, a true revelation of the Godhead and he was totally obedient to the Father. And this is what he left us the Holy Spirit for, for us to know what the what God wants us to do and a way of communicating with him. It's just an interesting thought that God is in heaven and God is Jesus and God is the Holy Spirit and we have access to the Holy Spirit through Jesus. I'd just like to finish off with a short prayer. Thank you, Father, for sending Jesus. Thank you for this coming season of celebration. Lord, and thank you for giving us your word, for writing your word on our hearts so that we're able to fulfill the life that you've created us for. 
thank you again for all the opportunities that you've given us to, to know the truth. And Lord, I just pray that we can step up and be the revelation of your glory in this world that we live in. Amen.